Hello my soccer universe, let's talk round of 16 for the Asian Cup. Honestly, while there have been way more surprises at the AFCON, I think the action was better at the Asian Cup and there were also quite a few interesting surprises, especially in the early days, whereas the latter days were clearly dom dominated by the big clash between Saudi Arabia and South Korea. Plenty of storylines there as well. We also saw uh, Japan finally living up to the status as favorites. Australia super efficient, um, the biggest scoreline, but not the best performance, I would say. Uh, and yeah, as I said, we had surprises. We had Iraq, who seemed like destined to go to the semis. They're out. They're out. Shows you. It can still happen in Asia. Maybe finally the small nations in uh, the AFC Confederation are a little bit catching up and the tournament becomes a whole lot more competitive. Uh, we also had South Korea at least in the end showing what they're capable of which was also long 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 overdue because so far South Korean performances have been rather meh and then we have to talk of course about Iran as well Iran who look overall if you just look at the play look quite good but finishing is letting them so much down and now their biggest striker is out for the big clash with uh, Japan so let's see how that goes but I would say talk a little bit about the games I mean the Australia Indonesia game there was a whole lot of nothing Australia's got two goals from one shot in the first half shot on goal because the first goal was an own goal uh, it was a cross in uh, they got deflected by Bagot and it went into the 12th minute and Australia were cruising without needing to do much Boyle then makes it 2-0 as I said that's the first shot shot the goal and it, it is in an Indonesia try it, but I uh, don't do not have really the means to break down Australia then very late on Australia make it a purpose going through Goodwin and Sutar uh, in the 89th and the 91st but that was a score that was way too high this game was much 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 tighter tighter it's not like Australia are on a big roll they will face a much bigger test in the quarters and maybe then we finally can see what this Australia team is made of and then we already had our first surprise with Tajikistan taking on the UAE and Tajikistan have been a major story in the group stage I mean uh, finishing a group in second ahead of a um, huge country like China is no mean feat it has to be said uh, but taking on the UAE the UAE I know quantity in Asia. I mean, they were at least semi-finalists, also disgraced semi-finalists last time around. Yes, on home soil. Uh, they have been to a World Cup long, long, long time ago and, and so But they are a known quantity. But Tajikistan, for the longest of times, really played much better than the UAE. The UAE have been anemic through this tournament. And they take, uh, Tajikistan take a very deserved lead through uh, Kanonov in the 30th minute in the second half. They have a major chance that they just have to score. Uh, striker puts it wide off the net. And then it comes as you would expect. If you don't score your chances, you end up conceding and it's deep in the stoppage of the El Hamadi. And at that, that point, the UAE were pressing, uh, get an equalizer. And you actually thought that this game can only go one way, that it's now T T Tajikistan that will be, uh, you know, weighed down by uh, the majority of the occasion, that you kind of threw it away. But they go, they manage into a penalty shootout, uh, shootout and they convert all the penalties and egg actually really well converted. Whereas UAE have uh, can, can, can convert on the second one through Kyle Canedo and so Tajikistan are in the quarters. And the way things are going, it might not be a surprise if they go further because they're actually quite an entertaining side. Too bad I haven't seen too much of them, but when I watch highlights of Tajikistan, they're having fun. And that is fun to see. Everyone thought then that uh, Tajikistan will face Iraq. Uh, but Jordan had a little say in that, who took an early lead through Al Nomad. Yes, Iraq was the better team. and uh, But Jordan, you know, held their own. However, in midway through the second half, Iraq turned around through Natik and Hussein Aman, who has been the top scorer uh, in this uh, Asian Cup. He nets his sixth. And then he does something really, really, really stupid. He already got a yellow, yellow card late, late in the first half. He imitates the celebration by the Jor, by, 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 by Jordan and is sent off for taunting. The dumbest move that you can do, honestly. 
And while Iraq still thought that they could hang on, it all fell down in stoppage time. Again, a deep stoppage time equalizer through Al Arab. Uh, would see that they are going now into over overtime, but no, it's not overtime. Jordan Gay getting in through Al Arab and just two minutes later. Uh, absolute madness. And Iraq's tournament that was so well, they, I mean, they beat Japan. They had the top score of the tournament. They really looked set that they could move further on in, in this tournament. They're already out in really, really, really stupid fashion. It also has to be said because that was that was laid up to make a semi-final run for Iraq. An Iraq team that was not as highly uh, rated ahead of the tournament, tournament also has, has to be said. Then Qatar uh, had a little bit of a fight on and Pep Palestine uh, fought hard, uh, took even the lead through the Bach. Uh, but uh, just with uh, Al Haidos pulls one back and then right after they have a penalty through a FIFA and uh, Qatar. I don't want to say cruising, but without really exerting themselves, move over to, to, to the next round. I think this Qatar team is probably a little bit overlooked. Gotta say, I think their group stage was very convincing. This performance against Palestine, maybe not as much. But given that they have a relatively cushy route to the semis, uh, whereas the others have to really fight hard, don't overlook Qatar. Don't overlook Qatar. Uh, they're the hosts, they're the defending cha uh, champions, and don't let yourself fooled by the poor World Cup performance. Um, then Uzbekistan largely controlled the game against Thailand. I mean, I, I would say for the first 60 minutes or so, it was only Uzbekistan who had the lead through Turgunboev uh, in the third, 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 seventh, are clearly the better team. But this Thailand side has also a fight in them and they get it equalized in the 58 through Sarajat. Uh, but Fazulayev quickly re-established the lead for Uzbekistan. But from then on, there was a late Thai resurgence uh, an onslaught on the Uz Uzbek goal, but in, in the end, Uzbek is on hold on and move on to the next round. I think it's the first knockout time tied that they're winning at the Asian Cup. Yes, they've been in the quarterfinal before, but that was when it was a 16 team tournament. Now, with the 24 team tournament, they finally win a no knockout tie. I still think it's the next time that really counts because, you know, a semi final Uzbek is on have been a top. Uh, nation in Asia for a long time. They just have not made a uh, World Cup and they've never made it to a semi-final stage but I think they have the potential in there and if you've seen my uh, jersey review they also have beautiful jerseys. So let's see where Uzbekistan is going. But on that day as I said it was all about Saudi Arabia against South, South Korea. I was so gutted that I couldn't watch this live but I had it on. I followed very very closely. Um, and it was a weird game where, yes, uh, first half was more or less stalemate, not many chances. Yes, South Korea shot a few times on goal, but in such, in such a way that the goalie had always easy saves to make. Um, it was then laid on the South Saudi Arabia in one action, hit twice the crawl crossbar, and then on the rebound of the sack the second time. It's such a weird header that uh, South Korean defense is completely unsorted. And the ball goes wide. I mean, this was a mega chance for Sauce so Saudi Arabia to take the lead. However, Mancini um, makes the right con conclusion, springs on the Radif, and he's sent by Aldav Zari. Uh, maybe not quite meant the ball the way, but Radif runs onto uh, the goal and scores within 30, 30, 30 seconds. And it still took South Korea. A long time to, to wake up. I think there was, was even a good, good chance for uh, so, so they were to double the lead. But let's say roughly the last portion of the second half, it became South Korea suddenly came into the They brought everything on that they can throw. There was Hwang Hee-chan, Cho uh, Gwesung, Park Jung Woo. Everyone got thrown off. It was just offense, 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 and so so the river got on all all the defenders. Mancini kind of wanting to do the Italian way, which is not very Mancini like to to be honest. And South Korea had chances, mega chances. Uh, Joe hit in the stoppage time, and again the story for me at the Asian Cup is these long uh, stoppage times that we have seen uh, more so than in other two tournaments. And they hit once the crossbar uh, um, through Joe. And then in the ninth minute of stoppage time, Choke Wesung makes it to 1-1. Uh, in over, over, over time, um, maybe this whole onslaught took a little bit uh, strength out of South Korea, but they were still very much the better team. Probably should have scored uh, already there, but it goes to penalties. And the penalty should, should, should as the hero is, of course, the um, 
South Korean goalkeeper uh, uh, Joe who saves the last two penalties by um, um, by Saul, also Social Arabia, na namely the ones from Al Najay and Harib. And before the final pe penalty through Huang Hijun is taken, Roberto Macini has resigned his, to his faith and is walking down uh, the tunnel, doesn't even watch, and he's getting majorly criticized. I think he probably deserves a whole lot of criticism. I th well, what I hear, his leadership style with this South Korea, uh, with this South Korean squad, is not very well liked. And I think he is another casualty of Saudi Arabian oil money. I would be surprised if he would stay on, but you know, he's the highest paid national team coach. So let's see. I honestly would say he would deserve this failure the way he walked out on the Italy squad. But let's see from there. So one East Asian power is moving on and the other one, Japan also. Japan looked irresistible against Bahrain. That's a Bahrain team that finished first in the, in the group with South Korea. Yes, uh, I was a little bit odd at the way every, every, everything went on, but still finishing ahead of South Korea. Japan was all over and uh, that only had a one a nil lead at the half uh, was a little bit ridiculous. Rizzo Doan get, getting goal, but uh, right after the uh, halftime, Kubo makes it a, uh, a two nil lead. It should have been way more. Bahrain was not on the field. The only goal that Bahrain get, uh, get is a comically own goal by Weda, where uh, he and the goalie want to go to the same ball and are not on the same line when goalie needs to yell there. Weda uh, scores in his own goal. But he then make, makes up his sense for Mike Kuma and the way that uh, makes it then 3-1. Uh, uh, very convincing performance by Japan in this form. Japan are title, uh, the top favorites. However, it was only Bahrain. And I think the next round will show us a whole lot more. In the next round, they will face Iran, an Iran team that should have been cruising over Syria. They had that game squarely in the bag. The only thing is they could not convert the chances. That's the old story with Iran. They, get, they actually had a half, 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 half the lead. They should have been 2 or 3 nil, But they get a penalty that made it Tarami, who was also fouled, uh, converts. Uh, and he became kind of the figurehead of this entire tie. Um, as I said, second half, same, same thing. But Iran think they can, you know, in second gear, make, make it to the next round and give, give off a stupid penalty. Where the Iranian goalie, yes, it was not of the Iranian goalie, uh, brings down a serious strike and he been uh, converts and makes it 1-1 one, one. and then Iran desperately tried to win this one in reg regulation can, again can can convert and to add insult to injury Tarami gets in the last 10 minutes two yellow cards and the second one if you are already on a yellow you cannot do this so he sent off and I've uh, pre -pre previously derided Tarami I, I want to take it back a, 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 a little bit, bit but I always find himself Making here and there some dumbest decisions, let's put it that way. And now Iran with 10 men took all the wind out of the overtime. There was not much hair happening over time, period, because Iran uh, knew that they cannot really open themselves up to Syria. Uh, and so it goes to penalties. And there, Iran, perfect, convert all the penalties. Actually, very well converted, although the best one was probably by Basir al Dali. Uh, straight, straight up to keep them, them alive, but Yusuf saw his effort already saved on, on the second try and Iran are through and will not face Japan. They cannot cover chances and the best strike in Tarami is not available. So I'm not sure uh, how this will pan out or how um, for Iran, given that Japan played well, also not covering all the chances, but I would see Japan as the favorites there. So let's look over at the bracket uh, we already talked talk about. So we have two big ones. We have Australia against South Korea and we have Iran against Japan. And I think whoever will win either of, of these sides has to be considered the big favorites to make it into the final with a slight asterisk that I think Qatar, uh, if Iran and Japan, there are a lot of, you know, energy spent and so on and Qatar can ease over Uzbekistan. I could see Qatar beating either one of, of them, Iran more than Japan, to be honest. Uh, South Korea or Australia, whoever comes out of this one has to make it to the final because, I mean, we have Tajikistan against Jordan uh, going in there as well. Um, if it pans out, Jordan will move on, South Korea 
by a hair will move on. It's a really, really tight one with Australia, but I think South Korea is just a bit more star power. Japan should move on, Qatar will move on. And we're still at the South Korea against Japan final, which would be uncharacteristic, but also really, really, really interesting because, you know, South Korea is waiting forever for an Asian title, whereas Japan have uh, four of them. South Korea have two, but also were the first, first two back in the 50s and 60s. So uh, you can see why they don't, uh, why they're still, still waiting. And the games will be played, will start with the outside side on the 2nd of February. Uh, then we have the big one with Australia and South Korea, which unfortunately I will not be able to watch because I have a last game uh, to go, go, go to. Then the other big one, uh, lunchtime, Iran against Japan. I'm also afraid I won't be able to watch because we have a birthday party. Yes, I will again rely a lot on highlights and then Qatar against Uzbekistan rounded out on Saturday. That was it from me from the Asian Cup. Uh, please let me know what you thought. Who do you think will win? How will the big mat matches this round uh, pan out? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!